Today, we are going to listen to one of the messages that we'll listen to in 2018. Holy Spirit wants to bring it to our remembrance. Second Peter 1, 1 12. Second Peter 1 12. 1 verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Peter said, you know, you know, careless, so you know, go neg be negligent. That is, he will not be careless, not to do this thing or bring it to your remembrance. The thing where I don't teach now before, do na no more. But I want to make, I want to imagine now, so now they establish in the truth. Then in 1 Timothy 4 6, make we read with in Paul, in his letter to the sense of God, with in talk. 1 Timothy 4, 4, 4 6. Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. He said, for you to be a good servant of God, you must always put the congregation or the saints of God in remembrance of what they have been taught before. That is why we all, sometimes we go into our past messages to listen to them. But before we listen to the message today, we shall read from Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Make you see what in Paul talk there to the Galatian church. Read verse 10. Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. It's Paul say, the preaching when they preach to you people, you sense of God in Galatians, it's not to persuade you now with sweet talk or to flatter you now. No. I'm not seeking to please you. Because if I please you, it means I'm not a genuine servant of God. But his preaching is to do that which pleases God. Now they tell them so. As long as God is pleased and sanction what is being preached to you people, then I know I'm in the right track. I'm doing what God wants me to do. Then Paul the third, the church so in Galatia. Then read verse 11 now. We didn't talk. Verse 11 to 12. Verse 11, Galatians 1. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul, they tell the Galatians church, you see, all this preaching where they preach, the gospel where I revealed to now. I know receive them from any man. Nobody says any man teach me. But this gospel where they preach to now, so. Now, the thing where I hear Jesus Christ tell me, now they tell you now. Now they tell them so. Then look at 8 to, and 9. Verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, 
than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Oh, now put a curse, place a curse on any man that will come and preach unto you another gospel where I don't preach to on man. Even if an angel come from heaven, come preach another gospel than that which you have heard from me. Paul, they talk now. Let that angel be accursed. As serious as that. So Paul was convinced of the fact that Nigeria they talk to Ram, to the people. Don't be sending my teacher. And so the mystery of the kingdom of heaven I hear for this church. They are not after man. We are not taught by any man. We don't receive them from any man. But what Jesus Christ says, we should tell you, now will they tell you in the church. So by revelation of Jesus Christ, now be the gospel when I hear, so the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. That's why I pity anybody who preach any other thing apart from the mystery of the kingdom of heaven God has given us here. And look at which is just I can't talk. Matthew 13. Matthew 10. Verse 17. Verse 17. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Who they talk here? Jesus. He said, who? Many what? Righteous men. Have you? I've never told you so there. Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which we see. That see, the thing we Jesus Christ, they open our eyes to see. That is the hidden truth which Jesus Christ open our eyes to see. We will they hear for this church. He said, not, he said, many prophets and Russian, they desire to see this hidden truth in the scripture. They desire to hear this hidden truth. He said, but they are not what? And he talks so. And actually, if you want to go out and evangelize or preach to any other person, you tell them some hidden truth and I don't hear for this Bible. We will then, they don't teach not here. What they will do? They will do look and say, wait in this one they talk. I've been mean, another experience. Huh? Because it is not given to them to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. But it is given to a true church. As Christ said, he said, to you are giving the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, I have not given. Listen. And you know what in God talk? He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What knowledge? Knowledge of this hidden truth in the scripture. That's why they are destroyed. They don't know their life from right. They don't know their left from right. What do you call it? I just can't even talk, say, in Matthew 22, 29. The other passage was Hosea 4, verse 6. Where are you just now? That my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Matthew 22, 29 says, Jesus Christ says, He said, My people err. That is, they make a mistake, go, go, go into error, not knowing the scripture or truth. And not knowing the power of God that is in this truth. That's why they err, they make mistake. That's why they don't believe. Matthew. Yes. 20. Matthew 22, 29. 
29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, and, no, and not knowing the scriptures. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. People make mistake. They go into error. Very bad, Satan will catch them through that error. Because they do not know the scripture of this truth. This hidden truth. There are so many hidden truths in this scripture. We'll be saying, Jesus Christ, sweet or true, they teach us here. And they don't know the power of God. There's power of God in this word of truth. They don't know. That's why they make mistakes. But unfortunately, the natural man or the carnal man will not be able to discern the things of the spirit. Because these hidden truths are things of the spirit. Not only the spiritual man, not the discerner. The carnal man, the natural man, go see it as strange. They go see it as what? As strange. What is he talking about? That's why most of the messages here, to some, they are very strange. But it's the truth of this scripture. This truth, now go lead us to heaven through the narrow way, no other way. And if you say you are ignorant of this scripture, like Jesus Christ said, you will make mistake. You wander away into danger, wander away from the path of of, of, of righteousness. One day from the narrow way into the broad way. And you land in hell. So most of these things that we hear, to some natural people or carnal men, they are strange. Not be nice they happen or whether you see the, the doctrine of God, doctrine of Christ strange. In the time of poor it happened. Acts 17, you see and there. Acts 17. Verse 20. Acts 17, verse 20. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Who, who did talk to Paul? So? Now, philosophers among the Jews. So. Paul, they preach. He went to market where he was preaching. He went to their synagogue where he was preaching. So some of the philosophers, when they they know too much, that they philosophize the word of God among the, among the Jews. They say, this thing we put the preacher is strange to our ears. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Wait till all this one come in now. We put the talk. So you don't think they happen. If it happens in time of poor, you can imagine what's happening in this generation. People, they say, this is strange. How can we? How can we? What doctrine is this? What does it mean? And that strange thing, we pour the torso, now I go lead them to heaven. So we are going to listen to the message today. To some who are here today, it will be strange what you are going to hear. It will be what? Strange. But to the spiritual, we will understand what God is saying to us today. And so we shall listen. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I am glad. Jesus. 
So the message this morning is, I am glad I belong to Jesus. Romans 8, 9, C. It says, If any man have not the spirit of Christ, is none of Christ. This means that any man who is a member of a true church and has not the spirit of Christ does not belong to Jesus. And one thing every believer in Christ must know and understand is that this gospel of salvation is this word of truth. Not the word of falsehood. Neither is it the word of God that has been corrupted. As Paul said, in 2 Corinthians 2. Let's see what in Paul talk. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17a. Verse 17a. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Now Paul, they talk so. He said, there are not as many which corrupt the word of God. It means there are many, even in that generation, that were corrupting the word of God. That is either adding to the word of God or separating from the word of God to please the congregation. But Paul said no be like those people. First Corinthians two. First Corinthians two, verse four a. Verse four a. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now Paul they talk here. You say in preaching. It's not meant to entice any man to make conclusion, make it a laugh, they cry joke, like all these comedian. See, my preaching will not be like that. My preaching is the word of truth that is not corrupted, accompanied by the Holy Ghost and his power, that it may give salvation. from sin and deliverance that may give healing to the disease of the soul that may convince people of their sin that will lead to their repentance he said that's my preaching so all these words where I just mentioned now a tithing word of man's wisdom, corrupted word of God, will never give salvation to any believer in Christ. Therefore, for any believer in Christ to have the spirit of Christ in him or her, that believer in Christ must be born again of this incorruptible word of truth which we shall read now in James 1 verse 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures 
You say now by your own way, now you go to begat us, that we take born us with the word of truth. Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. This word of truth, now they give salvation to man. Because once you are born again of the word of truth, the spirit of Christ will dwell in you. Such a boy or girl, now go feel say, I am glad I belong to Jesus. Every child of God, even though you are seen with the Holy Spirit, having been born again of the word of truth, must be careful not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Or be careful not to vex him. By our continual or willful rebellion or stubbornness to the word of truth. The Spirit of Christ or the Holy Spirit is a gift. Just as eternal life is a gift. And any gift can be forfeited. When the children of Israel, in their continual rebellion to the word of truth, which was preached to them by the prophets of God as at that time, the Bible recorded that God now turned to be their enemies and fought against them. As that's the city term. As that's the city. As that's the city verse 10. As that's the city verse 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Ananias and Sapphira. We fully. That is knowingly committed the sin of lying to the Holy Ghost. After they are kept back, part of the money that was meant for God's own use, Bible recorded that Satan can't feed their hearts. After the spirit of Christ, don't depart from them. God now turned to be their enemy and fought against them, and they died. This happened in the early church. David prayed one prayer. And what was that prayer where David prayed? Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Verse 11. Verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David prayed this prayer. He said, Lord, cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Once the Holy Spirit is taken from any child of God, he or she is cast away from the presence of God, either by spiritual death or by physical death, as for the case of Ananias and Sapphira. Don't forget the message, I belong to Jesus. When we say we belong to Jesus, 
It simply means we belong to this truth. That will lead every believer in Christ through the narrow way unto eternal life in heaven. And those who belong to this truth Jesus, I can't call them say nine sheep then be. Maybe say they go hear in voice. That is this word of truth. And they go follow him. John 10 27. John 10 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Those who belong to Jesus, who belong to this truth, he said he knows them, and they hear his voice, the voice of truth, and they follow him like sheep. Those who are of this truth, belong to just one spiritual family and they belong to one kingdom all over this whole head there are only three kingdoms and there are only three families all over the world And what are these three kingdoms? The kingdom of the true light, the kingdom of false light, the kingdom of darkness. These are the three kingdoms in this whole world. And who are these three families in this whole world? The first family is a biological family. Into which we find ourselves when we were born in sin into this world. The other two families will remain. Our spiritual families. And one of these two spiritual families now be the spiritual family of God. We'll be say the firstborn in this family now, Jesus. Who will read now? Romans 8.29 Romans 8.29 Verse 29 For whom he did for known he also did predestinated predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. So there's a spiritual family of God in which Jesus is the firstborn. He has many brethren in this family. So those who belong to this truth are brethren in this spiritual family of God. And so this particular spiritual family of God. Who are the truth? They belong to the kingdom of true light. We mentioned just now. And Jesus can't call them and say they be the children of the kingdom. Matthew 13. 38a. 13. 38a. 
The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That is, this members of the family of God who are enveloped in true light because they belong to the kingdom of true light are the good seed, the children of the kingdom. Members of this spiritual family of God, they are holy unto God. They are a peculiar people unto God and a chosen generation of God who have been chosen in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. Now God don't choose them. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. 3 to 4. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That is that future family of God that belong to this truth. Of all these families waiting for this world, this is the only family where God know for heaven. A monster. Verse 2a. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Luke 10. Verse 20. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. These were the members of the spirit family of God in the time of Jesus' ministry. But unfortunately, some of them, or those 70 disciples, when they talk about so, whose things were written in heaven, so, could not overcome Satan, making them to see the truth as a hard thing. And so could not continue with the truth. Satan now took away their crown of life. And so their names were no longer found where? Written in heaven. You see the danger of withdrawing from this truth? And going the broad way, the way of falsehood, the danger in it is better for you not to have known this truth than to have known this truth. You can't go back from following this truth. Even though your names were in heaven before, they will be blotted out. So Satan has succeeded. To pull out some of these seven disciples out of the spiritual family of God. Now, only the names of those will overcome all the trials and temptations which have been their way. Now, in will remain written in the book of life till they are called home or till the rapture. Revelation 3. Verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. 46 to 50. Verse 46. 
when he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. You see, Nigeria and it also, that is, I have a spiritual family that I belong to, where I'm a firstborn. That's what he was telling the disciples. Those who have this truth, who belong to Jesus, they are always doing the will of their Father in heaven. Holy Spirit won't tell us about the other spiritual family. That is the spiritual family of Satan. The dragon. The family of God only one then be. But Satan gave many spiritual families. And this spiritual family of Satan, they belong to the kingdom of first light and the kingdom of darkness. Jesus can't call members of this spiritual family of Satan. He see them be the children of the wicked one. They'll be waiting. Children of the wicked one. So every member of the spiritual family of Satan is a child of the wicked one. And you can see members of this spiritual family of Satan. They are their father, the devil. You see, the loss of their father, they will always do. Jesus you know, talk say, you see, members of this spiritual family of Satan, they do the loss of their father, the devil. You see, they are murderers. Some have not defy their hands with the blood. Or the abortion we don't do. We fully murdering babies in their wombs. They are their father, the devil. They belong to that spiritual family of Satan. Why some have become murderers? Because of the hatred in their hearts. Again, the children. Or God's own spiritual family. For no justifiable reason. They just hate you. And like their father, the devil, Jesus can say there's no truth in them. And they abide not the truth. Even though they are dead side with they say with the truth center, but they don't abide in the truth. And they are all liars. That's what that's why I call all of them. Like their father, the devil. We all know that passage very well. He said, Come, pass it where I'm reading. We shall read it again. John 8 44. John 8 44. John 8 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. The lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Why are they liars? 4 John 2 4. 1 John 2, verse 4. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. I know Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Are you doing his will? Are you obeying his doctrine? Do you belong to him? Or you are a the devil? 
One of the spiritual families of Satan that is very dangerous to the soul of members of the spiritual family of God. Now we they call the Hallow family. Or spiritual families of adulterers and adulteresses. Who have the Christian language? That's why they are dangerous to us. The enemies of God. The enemies of the cross of Christ. Because they are in friendship with the world. And they mind earthly things. And their God is their belly. That is that family. Hello, family. They are very dangerous to the soul of you who is a member of the spiritual family of God. Especially when you go to unholy and lands with them. And so, Apostle Paul, he called the one members of the spiritual family of God to beware of them. Because they are enemies of the cross of Christ, they are enemies of God. James 4 4. James 4 4. And Philippians 3 19 and 18. He did it. All these belong to one family of Satan. Paul can make us to know that even though the ministers of this particular hallow family, of Satan, even though they are preaching about Jesus, Paul made us to know, say, now that Jesus, now they preach. Now that gospel, now they preach. And that spirit, now they guide and lead that family, this hallow family. And what is that spirit? The spirit of the world. Because Satan, their father, is the prince of this world. So, Apostle Paul called the one members of the spirit family of God. Say, watch you. They get the preacher of this under Jesus or by the spiritual family of Satan. Watch against the gospel that they preach you. Don't let them corrupt your mind with their, with their gospel and another Jesus. Don't let their spirit catch you. He won't. Paul went further to see that these ministers who preach this other Jesus, member of the rich family of Satan, the Allah family, he said they are deceitful workers, so they are false apostles who have transformed themselves into apostles of Christ. And they are transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. Even as their father, the devil, has transformed himself into an angel of light. Whereas it is not the true light, not false light. That you have been reading often and often in the Bible. We will read them again. Second Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11, verse 4. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Now, read 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, Holy Spirit talked to Paul, so. But that family belongs to the spiritual family of Satan. So, apart from this hallow family we, that Holy Spirit has been telling us since, we belong to Satan, so. There's another of his family. Future family. Now be the family of serpents and vipers.
They are hypocrites in the church. In the true house of God. They appear outwardly to be righteous unto men. But inside them is hypocrisy. And it's so common in most churches today. It's wickedness, iniquity. And inside them are all kinds of unclean spirits, evil spirits, python spirit, familiar spirit, sorcery spirit, water spirit, witchcraft spirit, wizardry spirit. These are the families of Satan, genital vipers and serpents. And with this spirit in them, they do wickedness. Against genital of God, who are members of spiritual family of God. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. 34a. Verse 34a. O generation of vipers, how can ye be evil? Speak good things. If you see any person, they always speak evil things about other children of God. Run away from that person for your soul's sake. Run away from that person. He's an enemy of your soul. Now the other family belong to. Matthew 23. See what you're talking talk about in there. This family of vipers. This family of Satan. Matthew 23. 33. Verse 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Who did you talk here? Now Jesus. The other family of uh, Satan, the dog and pig family. The dog and pig family. No matter how you watch them with the word of truth, they will eventually go back to waiting. They will have vomit and they are mud. 4 John 2, 19. 4 John 2. First John 2, 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not, no doubt, have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So the dog and pig family, they will surely, by and by, no matter how you watch them, they will go out from this special family of God to where they belong. To prove say they not actually be part of us. Now we will see the torso. And these people who are in the dog and pig family, they are ever learning. They will never come to know the truth. We all know that passage very well in the Bible. Don't open it. Second Timothy 3 7. When you get to read it. Second Timothy 3 7. They are ever learning, but never coming to knowledge. That's why they always go back to where? To their vomit and their mud. The other special family of Satan is the good family. Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Verse 12. Hacking unto me, ye stout hearted, that are far from righteousness. These are the good for me. They are stout hearted, they are far from righteousness. They will never do that which is right, the sight of God. They are forever receiving the Holy Ghost, but they are stubborn and rebellion to this truth. Acts 7. Acts 
Acts 7. 7. 51. 51. Ye stiff naked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. The good family, they are stiff neck and a second heart, and yes, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. The good family, they are in the midst most of among the chief of Jesus. Who make us with the strong family of Jesus. Like I said before, they will never do that which is trying to of God. They always receive the doctrine of Christ. Ah, no mind them, no, they owe me that. No matter how you preach the doctrine, they will never obey or believe. But on the day of judgment, if no true repentance now, Jesus will separate the goat from the sheep and will send the goat to where they belong to. I will read that now. Where they be sent to after separation on the day of judgment. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. 32 to 33. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as his shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Now, read 41. Then shall he say, also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. That is the final decision of the good family. They are cursed. And their final destination of everlasting fire, prepare for their father, the devil, and his fallen angels. This message today. It's meant to examine ourselves whether we actually belong to Jesus or to this truth or whether we belong to the other family. He go up an adventure, might give them repentance to the acronym of this trade by their special condition so that they may recover themselves from the trap of Satan. We don't take them captive inside this family. That's why this message is coming on. So it is therefore to pray earnestly. If you know you are in the other family, that we may recover yourselves from Satan's family who has taken you captive at his will. And he will do if you cry to God. 